you yeah, welcome back to Business Life to our main story for tonight. And General Secretary of the Tanker Drivers Association has announced that the strike by their members has been called off. And so what exactly is necessitating this sudden change of mind? Let's find out from the General Secretary in this clip. Yeah, I think that uh, really we are satisfied with whatever agreement has been reached. The fact is that, let me say that uh, we are very, very sorry for what happened the course of today. And we are also very happy that at the end of the day we have been able to come to some level of understanding. And let me tell you that the union, with its membership, is really satisfied with the steps that are being put in place for us to dis address the concerns of the, the tanker drivers. Uh, we've agreed that going forward, after going back to work, we'll be engaging the stakeholders, the tanker owners association as well as MPA for us to meet on Monday, for us to look at the actual grievances of the employees and address them. And we are satisfied with that. Okay. And your members made specific reference to some conditions of service which for, which triggered this particular action that we saw today and then the announcements last week. From where you stand as the chairman or the leader of a group, the general secretary of a group, do you think your members will be satisfied with this particular agreement? That you... Yes, I think whilst we are meeting here, we have the leadership of our members. The tanker drivers union members are here. And I think we consulted ourselves very well. We went out to caucus before we finally came to this agreement. He talks about the drivers boycotting OMCs that do not comply fully with this particular manner. But that would mean that they are giving unfair advantage to other people who will overlook some of the breaches of this manner and still go and supply fuel to the people. No, but the fact is that that's the only way we can solve the problem. Uh, the, the manual is very explicit. When you go to a place and you are not satisfied about the discharging processes, you as a driver, you need to boycott it. Because if you don't do that, at the end of the day, you will be surcharged for whatever losses is involved. So I think that our people are okay with it. And I think we agree that it should come boycotting. We are not going to hear any threats of strike action again? I assure you, I don't think it's going to happen. Thank you. It will not happen. All right, so my colleague Komla Adoma has been following this very development and now joins me in the studio. Komla, uh, the general secretary, you heard him, he said they're going back to engage their members. Didn't they do that before embarking on the strike? Well, Sandra, from the information we have, mm -hmm. um, they had been engaging with the NPA and some other stakeholders in the space, but they were not getting any positive responses from them, and that prompted their strike action, mm -hmm. which we saw today. Mm -hmm. So the meeting, what, what were some of the issues that were highlighted and how are they going to move this whole um it's it's temporary they are not calling it over they just suspended it so how are they going to move um, the whole conversation forward to be able to come to an amicable um, resolution well sandra so at this particular meeting there was npa there okay. was bust fuel tanker drivers there was a national fuel tanker drivers mm -hmm. there were other stakeholders in the space and then the agreement one of the things they agreed on is that the national oil manual mm -hmm. which gives a set of guidelines which all these fuel tanker transporters must comply with mm -hmm. when they are going to discharge fuel to the omcs must be followed to a letter they say going forward these guidelines must be followed to a letter why were they not following the guidelines in the first place you know some of these issues have to do with personal you know discretions mm -hmm. and you know biases and all of this some of the individuals want to make a lot more money and so they overlook some of these infractions and then they still distribute the, the fuel to these OMCs. So now mm. they are saying going forward, they're going to strictly enforce this compliance. Once the OMCs do not uh, abide by the safety protocols, they will not discharge the fuel and those who overlook these guidelines will be surcharged and they are charging the tanker drivers to actually boycott these OMCs. All right, Kamala, hold it right there. Let's go over to the phone to speak to um, um, the MD of Engine Petroleum Ghana uh, to find out more. And uh, Mr. Akwabwa, can you hear me and good evening? Good evening. I can hear you, Lauren. All right, thanks so much for joining. One of the main issues of contention leading to this strike is that the petroleum product transportation delivery rental and loss control manual is what the tanker drivers are contesting. What exactly does this whole thing mean? Well, um, I think it's, it's a, a guideline that has been put in place to ensure that um, uh, fuel is, is discharged uh, in full when they arrive at their final destination. Mm. Now, if you go through the manual, the, the guidelines are quite clear. I mean, upon arrival at the service station or the delivery point, mm. the discharge procedure, and even after the discharge procedure, what needs to be done? 
Now, if if there's any disagreement whatsoever, the guidelines also I mean, gives I mean, gives direction as to what needs to be done. Mm. You know, when there's any disagreement of any sort. Right. But let let, let me add again that this this whole process is collaborative. You know, right. There are a lot of parties involved in all that. So from the country to the um, uh, the uh, what's it called from the country through to the, the final delivery point. Right. Everybody has a role to play. All right. So we've seen a document uh, that has been signed by the EP and dated May 14, saying that until this document is revised, you have to comply with this directive. So why is it so difficult for the OMC to comply? Uh, we are complying with it. I mean, uh, I if don't you're know complying, then why are companies? they? Why are the tanker drivers accusing you or uh, saying that you're not complying? No, I mean, if if you cited a letter by by the NPA in May 2018. Uh, this issue has come up over and over and over. And uh, we have been to the NPA to see how we can resolve it. I mean, the oil marketing companies have these manuals at all their retail outlets. All right. you know, it's, it's a matter of, I mean, it's not just, we haven't, we, haven't, uh, we haven't seen any instance where an oil marketing company has refused to follow these uh, discharge procedures. Uh. You know, yeah, so we are complying with it. Probably, I mean, in any case, when, when a tanker short delivers, of, of course, the, the driver will be aggrieved mm. because uh, the man will be deducted from his salary and all that. Yes. But I'm saying that if the driver is not satisfied that he has not short delivered, of course, there are avenues for him to, to be addressed. Mm. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. We've been speaking to Henry Akwaba, who is the MD for Engine um, Oil Petroleum um, Ghana Limited. And Daryl Kwaba, this is a conversation that today you saw the demonstration and the outcome yeah. of what happened. And, so and the strike has been called. It's, off, been, so it's been suspended. Suspended. Yes. And hopefully uh, in the few days, there were fears that we run out of fuel exactly. because of yeah. the strike and all of that. But mm -hmm. uh, thankfully things have changed. So let's see how things go sure. uh, in the days to come.